Yeah, I'm not doing well, folks. I uh, <laughs> live in a backpackers in Sydney. And I'm from here, so... <laughs> Not part of the five-year plan to be sharing a bunk bed with Julio. <laughs> He's on the top going, wee, oh, wee, oh. I'm on the bottom listening to a podcast about how to be confident. <laughs> That's a huge gap in moods to have that close. Like, I can literally see the outline of his horse cock coming through the front. I'm wearing blue light block and goggles that I got early access to my super... to... because <laughs> of the circadian rhythms. <laughs> Just sitting next to a candle, brother. You know what I'm talking about. But he's coming in. He's like, we're going to make spaghetti for dinner in the communal kitchen. Ba, ba, da, ba. Just this intercontinental conga line of cunts. Where are you from, man? I grew up just there, OK? I, I've travelled 30 metres in the last 30 years. Like a disabled turtle. Put me down, Francois. Like, just... Just get a hammer and crack my shell so I can slither into the nearest Centrelink and get on the discounted pharmaceutical benefits scheme. Fentanyl, I'm microdosing it. But you know... This is when you know you've hit rock bottom, when you've got roller luggage and you're not going to the airport. You're just... <laughs> just walking around the CBD, just... Going to the domestic terminal? No, I'm gonna sublet a bathroom and a McDonald's, okay? <laughs> I'm gonna use the nappy changing station as a standing desk for my Zoom conference calls. <laughs> There's diarrhea on the wall, that's a Pollack painting. I'll sue you for defamation. I'm in a skyscraper, baby. <laughs> but I'm not doing well, folks, I'll tell you that much. I'm getting bullied at an indoor rock climbing gym. It's where Dungeons and Dragons meets CrossFit, okay? It's where incels go to XL. It's a great place to go if you want to wear a harness and be puppeteered by a virgin. Just... <laughs> I was relaxing the other day, throwing lime bikes off a jetty, and... Uh... <laughs> That's how I chill. <laughs> Sipping lighter fluid through a curly straw, it was nasty. <laughs> I'm crippled by debt. Because I parked in a loading zone for seven years, and... <laughs> People freak out about debt, I don't know why. It's not real, it's like, it's just like God. It's an Excel spreadsheet in the sky with negative numbers in it. It doesn't change the taste of your eggs Benedict just because you owe Vodafone five grand. It still tastes the same. No, it is real, eh? My trigger warning is seeing my full name on an envelope. But I was on the bus the other day and tragically it broke down. But uh, luckily there was a bus replacement train. <laughs> this might not have happened. It was... <laughs> I'm on the spectrum, obviously. I, look, my personality will be trickling out throughout the show. Like, I don't mean to cast aspergers, but 61, you know, like... I'm like the banana your mum packs in your lunchbox, permeates through, makes your sandwich taste like a boost juice. You're like, oh. <laughs> I think the cheese tastes like a banana rama. Oh. I was diagnosed on the spectrum because when I watched the movie The Titanic, I empathised more with the boat. <laughs> For me, 9 11 was just structural damage. I... <laughs> Scaffolding is my spirit animal. I like the way it supports a building in the early stages of its development. Scaffolding's like tricycle wheels for a skyscraper. It's like you can do it, Bryce Waterhouse Cooper's building. Fucking send it. <laughs> but it's a thing now, guys. It's called uh, neurodiversity, which means there's a diversity of brain types. So neurotypical, that's like being white. <laughs> that's like you watch Ted Lasso, do meal prep, go to Cotton On just to Shazam the music. Don't you worry, don't you worry, child. What's, what's this one called? I can't quite hear the lyrics. Nasty. Being neurotypical means you think the way Chris Hemsworth looks. I think the way Ronald McDonald looks. 
And I also look the way Ronald McDonald looks, which is a two-for-one meal deal for you guys in terms of working out what I'm about. So that's neurotypical. That's in the middle of the bell curve distribution. Then on the very end, you've got people who can smell prime numbers. 61, just, just head button mirrors, going to the Joker eight times. Ticket for two, one for me and one for the hammer. Because when you're watching that movie, every head looks like a nail. It's not relatable, but yeah, I... But no, even Woolworths acknowledges it's a thing now. Woolworths now has one hour of quiet time a week where they turn off all the music so the autistic people can go and get meagering without having a seizure. <laughs> Which feels a little disrespectful, doesn't it? Just to set an hourglass and be like scurrying like rats, okay? <laughs> you got an hour before Nicki Minaj comes back on and your face plant into the avocado display. <laughs> Gonna have to do an autopsy on this pile of space cadets that didn't get out in time. <laughs> we used to cremate them on site, but if you inhale the fumes, you can't read social cues for a financial year, so we... <laughs> Woolworths says they're providing a safe space for the nation's most vulnerable. Fuck off. There's a doomsday clock ticking in the background while I panic by a Fibonacci sequence of items. <laughs> You've created a fucking escape room for Rain Man. <laughs> it's like if there was only one hour of wheelchair access a week. <laughs> and then they raised that ramp like a drawbridge on a medieval castle. Just <laughs> beep, beep, beep. Sorry, Gary, my lead, you're feeding windows over, my lord. After 12, it's a crawl space. <laughs> I like to do medieval reenactment in the CBD because it upsets people. <laughs> do you ever see that? Just these growing men just dressed in full chain metal. Just going, stand down, squire, it's only a flesh wound, no need to apologise. <laughs> just these dorks impersonating the jocks of the 12th century. <laughs> do you think in 800 years, nerds will be pretending to play State of Origin? But soon everyone's gonna have autism because of the vaccine and... <laughs> it's more of a slow release drip feed. You'll see, 61, you'll find out. I can't wait, because Woolworths will be as quiet as a Tibetan monastery. It'll be the other way around. There'll be one hour of buble for the four remaining Sky News viewers just to... <laughs> You go to Woolworths now, it's like a nightclub. Tonight's gonna be a great night. No, I'm trying to find batteries for my sleep apnea mask. <laughs> I'm wearing a suit and a backpack. Things are not going well. Because <laughs> the suit says you're going places, but the backpack says you've got two trains and a bus in your future. <laughs> you're wearing your car, you loser. That's what it is. A backpack's just a car for losers. You fucking... <laughs> People will use Tupperware because you can't afford food court sushi, dipstick. Just scanning the products. Beep. Beep. Unexpected item in the baggage area. If I was a baggage area, I would expect all items. You're a passive receptacle for objects, cunt. Get with the program. Stop sounding the bullhorn to summon the last human over to accuse me of stealing. I am, but it's a coincidence. So, like... God damn it. <laughs> See, I was mentally ill before Facebook. <laughs> now everyone's got it, but there's no term for us thoroughbreds that were <laughs> out there in the 90s when you had to be an absolute weirdo to have it. You had to have a trench coat and black eyeliner and be listening to the cure. <laughs> <laughs> Just... <laughs> now blokes can get it. It's cultural appropriation. It was supposed to be for nerds and women. Now football players are crying, fuck off, it's not for you. It's for people who start all their emails with sorry. When I was growing up, I got bullied for being a crybaby. Now it's the opposite. Be vulnerable, you soft cock. Fucking open up, mate, or I'll open up the back of your head, let any demons out. Trying to destigmatise the black dog, you dog cunt. 
I saw my high school bully, he had a neck tattoo of the number for Lifeline. <laughs> He's like, open up and tell them about him. Now I'm sponsoring him for a mullets for mental health fun run? <laughs> it's time to re-stigmatise mental health. <laughs> That's the thing, we love a vulnerable bloke because it's a charismatic contradiction, like a nimble fat guy or an intellectual on a skateboard. It brings you in. <laughs> like, I haven't seen that combination in the simulation. There's a glitch. 